Something is wrong. We may have to revise our theory of the creation of the universe. Dark matter is one of the few things in space that intrigue scientists. The absolute mystery surrounding this space property makes it all the more intriguing. Since its discovery, scientists have yet to reveal its true identity or discover how and why it occurs. Sometimes it even seemed as though it was all a false theory. But now, the James Webb Telescope has brought forth new evidence that dark matter exists, all thanks to an interesting discovery. What is this new evidence, and where was it found? Also, how does this help solve the mystery of dark matter? Join us in this video as we explore the James Webb Telescope's newly detected dark stars made of annihilating dark matter. If there was ever a scientific innovation project worth every penny, it's James Webb Telescope Space Telescope. The project cost about $10 billion, $9.7 billion of that coming from the U.S., $810 million from the European Space Agency, and $160 million from the Canadian Space Agency. Despite its huge figures, NASA's James Webb Telescope has far exceeded expectations. With its state-of-the-art instruments like the 21-foot mirror and 18 honeycomb-shaped segments, the James Webb Space Telescope has never failed to reveal unimaginable parts of our universe ever since its launch. The long-range infrared sensors on the JWST are also an added advantage to its amazing performance, enabling it to peer into the deepest parts of the cosmos. But you see, more than just capturing deep parts of our cosmos in ridiculously high-quality resolutions, the most interesting part of this telescope is its versatility. In just two-year working duration, the James Webb Telescope has been used for many feats, such as revealing hidden galaxies and galaxy clusters, studying distant stars and quasars, and even observing planets in our solar system. But now, James Webb Telescope has taken things a step further by unlocking one of the greatest mysteries of science, dark matter. The science community didn't plan this. They never expected the JWST could do it. But the JWST is full of surprises, and now it seems scientists have been ushered into a new realm of possibilities with this telescope. Dark matter is one substance that has driven scientists to the extreme in terms of research. This mysterious substance is the core reason behind multi-billion dollar science projects like the Large Hadron Collider. We all know matter constitutes nearly everything we see in the universe. But you see, many experts have bet hugely on the existence of another kind of matter called dark matter. But what exactly is dark matter, and how did it come into existence? Dark matter is a mysterious substance that makes up about 27% of our universe. This mysterious substance cannot be seen. In fact, it has never been seen before, but scientists have detected its effects all around us and in the cosmos. The study of dark matter so far has been quite interesting. Unlike regular matter, which consists of atoms, dark matter is different According to standard cosmological models, atoms are believed to make up only about 5% of the universe. Sometimes it's easy to confuse dark matter with dark energy. While the two may sound similar or the same, they are very different. Dark matter is a substance in the universe, but dark energy is a force. If you've heard about the theory of the universe's expansion, dark energy is the anti-gravity responsible for this expansion. Think of dark matter as the mysterious, invisible matter that fills up vacancies in the universe, while dark energy is the invisible force constantly stretching out the universe. Scientists believe dark energy makes up about 68% of the universe. Like dark matter, dark energy is invisible, but its effects are very much observed in the universe. But dark matter isn't just invisible, though. One other unique property of this substance is that it doesn't emit, reflect, or absorb light. Even electromagnetic radiation like X-rays or radio waves is useless against dark matter. This is why it has been impossible for scientists to detect dark matter directly. So far, a majority of the observations in our universe have been all thanks to gravitational and electromagnetic instruments. These are instruments that aid in detecting gravitational waves as well as capturing electromagnetic radiation in telescopes. But dark matter doesn't play by those rules. One rule that dark matter does obey, however, is that it interacts with other aspects of our universe, like ordinary matter. Dark matter interacts with ordinary matter in our universe. Thanks to this interaction, 
we can detect its presence. Whenever this interaction takes place, it causes certain measurable gravitational effects in our universe. These effects are mostly noticed in large such as galaxies and galaxy clusters. Using these observable effects, scientists create near-accurate maps of dark matter distribution in the universe. So, even though there's no visual proof that dark matter exists, there's experimental proof that it does. Now you may wonder how something invisible could still be very active and influential in our universe. Well, however strange it may appear, the concept of dark matter isn't new to the scientific community. There have been years of research and discoveries in this direction. Dark matter concepts date back hundreds of years to the days of Newton. At that time, they discovered something unique called the dark nebulae. These were strange clouds of interstellar dust that happened to block the light from background stars. But it wasn't until the 1930s that the first true observations of what we now call dark matter were made by an astronomer named Fritz Zwicky. In 1993, Fritz made some observations of the coma cluster, and it revealed that there was about 500 times more mass than what was calculated previously by the great astronomer Edwin Hubble. However, this extra mass was completely invisible. Initially, Fritz's observations were met with much skepticism by the scientific community, but later on, astronomers confirmed that they were true. Fritz was the first to bring the strange concept of dark matter to light, no pun intended. But at the time, the majority of the science community wasn't having it. Vera Rubin was the astronomer who managed to convince the science community of the existence of dark matter. Her research was done 30 years after Fritz's, and it was a major milestone. Vera Rubin discovered that the centers of galaxies rotated at the same speed as their extreme ends. Normally, following the laws of physics, the center part of a spinning object is supposed to rotate faster than the extreme ends since the rotational force originates from the center. Vera expected galaxies to follow this law, but they didn't, which prompted her to investigate further. And so she realized that the entire galaxy was merely the center of a much larger structure. This was why it could have a consistent rotational speed from its center to the edges, but Vera didn't stop there. She went ahead to reveal that the missing structure in galaxies, which Fritz had earlier spotted, was dark matter. And so, the dark matter concept was fully introduced by Vera Rubin. Of course, the concept was vehemently disputed by scientists, but later on, her observations were proven to be accurate. In honor of her exceptional work in establishing the existence of dark matter, one of the recent innovatory telescopes in Chile was named after her, the Vera C. Rubin Observatory. Despite the pioneering work of Vera Rubin and other contributing efforts from various astronomers over the years, scientists still don't know exactly what dark matter is made of or why it even exists. This frustration has led the science community to create several experimental projects like the Large Hadron Collider, LHC, at CERN, Projects like the LHC aim to recreate dark matter under a controlled environment so that it can be studied effectively. But so far, that approach has yet to yield any tangible results, so scientists are still banking on assets like the James Webb Telescope Space Telescope. You see, while James Webb Telescope may not be able to detect dark matter visually like the stars and galaxies we find in the cosmos, it can detect the effects of dark matter in the cosmos and allow scientists to conduct an up-close study. This seems like a roundabout method, but it's the best scientists have been able to come up with so far, given our current technological abilities. By using existing models to observe the dynamics of galaxies, astronomers can measure how much mass is in stars and galaxies to help determine how much dark matter is inside them. You see, many galaxies would not be able to exist and move as they do without dark matter. This is one of the primary evidence scientists look out for. The large amount of invisible mess dark matter contributes will always be noticeable in scientific measurements. Where the JWST comes into all this? Well, with James Webb Telescope, scientists can precisely take extremely sharp images, which can then be used for further research. Such research will reveal observable disturbances caused by gravitational lensing, pointing scientists to areas where the invisible mass, dark matter, is lurking. Gravitational lensing is a phenomenon whereby light beams pass through a large mass and get slightly deflected as the fabric of space-time is slightly curved by the mass. Einstein's general theory of relativity well described this phenomenon. Through high-quality imaging of distant galaxies, the JWST can detect their masses and determine what is missing or not observable. 
Any missing stuff that's detected is most likely to be dark matter. It is important to note that no other telescope or space observatory can substitute the James Webb Telescope for this all-important task. This is because only James Webb Telescope can produce sharp images, allowing even the smallest disturbances to be measured. Moreover, the James Webb Telescope is the only instrument we currently have that can peer very deep into space. This is a huge advantage and allows cosmologists to access many more background galaxies and investigate them for traces of dark matter. One of the biggest discoveries of the James Webb Telescope so far was the ancient galaxy clusters discovered in the dark part of the universe, where nothing was thought to exist. These galaxies were among the first to form, and the discovery sparked controversy in the scientific community. Many scientists were puzzled as to how such massive, well-defined structures could form so early in the dawn of the universe. It was as if James Webb Telescope was trying to dispute everything we thought we knew. Now, James Webb Telescope has done it again, birthing another discovery that makes us doubt everything we knew before. You see, while we may have earlier described dark matter as a kind of substance that can interact with other forms of matter through gravitational forces, we must not fail to mention that it can self-annihilate, thereby producing energy peculiar to certain frequencies. There's more. In a recent science research paper, this special ability of dark matter was studied in detail and a shocking discovery concerning the James Webb Telescope was made. The paper reveals that certain unique detections from the James Webb Telescope Space Telescope are not actually galaxies, but something entirely different called supermassive dark stars. They are neutral space objects combining dark matter and regular matter, producing specific effects on telescopes and space observatories. These effects are visible from really far away, which is why James Webb Telescope captures them. As much as the name Dark Star seems absurd and hypothetical, these objects do not go against our established laws of physics. Going by the explanations of modern physics, these stars contain a cluster or nucleus of dark matter in the center, surrounded by a lot of gas. So, though it may be unusual, it's nothing too extraordinary. These dark stars are suspected to be most of the weird things spotted in the James Webb Telescope's images that scientists had previously assumed to be galaxies. They are still hypothetical for now, but if these dark stars are confirmed, it could be the final piece of the puzzle we need to prove the existence of dark matter once and for all. This new research paper gave us some insight into these dark stars and their composition. As we said earlier, the dark matter in these stars can self-annihilate, producing energy in the process. However, even though there is a lot of dark matter inside these stars, they also contain quite a lot of gas found in regular stars, like hydrogen and helium. However, these gases don't typically behave the same way they would in typical stars like our Sun. You see, in regular stars like our Sun, gases like hydrogen and helium undergo nuclear reactions in the star's core, producing light, heat, and radiation. However, in the case of these dark stars, these gases react differently due to the huge chunk of dark matter in the middle. Dark matter exerts gravitational forces on nearby matter, and so the gravitational forces from nearby dark matter prevent the gases in these stars from achieving a state where they're dense enough to undergo nuclear fusion. In other words, the only thing the gases in these dark stars do is produce very large gas clouds. Although these gas clouds are quite large, they are low intensity, unable to create anything other than a large nebula. These dark matter stars produce light just like regular stars. But in this case, the light produced is not the result of nuclear fusion, and it has nothing to do with friction either. Rather, the light from dark stars is due to dark matter interaction close to the center. Dark stars produce a lot of heat and emissions due to self-annihilation. The self-annihilation of dark matter stars releases large amounts of heat and forces many other gases, such as hydrogen, to stay away from the star's core. This prevents the occurrence of several phenomena that we see in other stars, like aging, collapse, and supernovas. Overall, dark stars are unique and unlike stars in many ways. For instance, they are much larger than typical stars. However, they do not qualify to be called galaxies, as they are much smaller than galaxies. The gas clouds from these objects could be anywhere from 4 to 2,000 astronomical units in diameter. This is quite small compared to galaxies that measure at least 100,000 light years across. For context, one light year is about 63241 astronomical units. 
Hence, you would need to place about 3 million of the largest dark star gas clouds side by side to fill up one small galaxy. On observatories, these objects appear as a kind of a point source from faraway distances. They possess very high surface temperatures and very high luminosity because the dark matter annihilation results in lots of gamma rays and high energy particles. This study connected many dots about these dark stars, starting with one strange galaxy the James Webb Telescope captured some time ago. This particular galaxy is believed to be the farthest ever, with a redshift of 13.2. However, one thing scientists noticed about this galaxy was its unusual overall brightness. At first, it was believed that it contained the so-called Population 3 stars. Population 3 stars are comprised mainly of the primordial gases hydrogen and helium. They are believed to be the oldest stars, formed just shortly after the Big Bang. The discovery of this supposed galaxy seemed like it would give scientists a chance to study this rare type of star. But now, based on this new research paper, it turns out that they were dark matter stars after all. One thing this paper points out about dark stars is that they have a separate absorption spectrum, the helium-2 spectrum. This spectrum is absent in galaxies. However, it is present in dark stars because they contain a lot of hydrogen and helium around them enabling the creation of two different absorption lines. The analysis from this paper suggests that this faraway galaxy possesses this property, which disqualifies it from being a galaxy. Moreover, luminosity is another factor. The luminosity from this dark star is equal to the luminosity of billions of suns. All this goes to show that this galaxy, and possibly other faraway galaxies spotted by James Webb Telescope, could be dark stars. The authors of this paper even suggest that we may actually discover more of these dark stars through further observations and using other telescopes. You see, as impressive as the James Webb Telescope may be, there are certain wavelengths it cannot operate at. For instance, 5 micrometer wavelengths. If a special kind of radio telescope is developed to explore these wavelengths, we could have more detailed images and potentially find more dark stars. For now, the JWST is observing galaxy evolution. Scientists can compare these observations to theories explaining dark matter's role in the universe. This will lead to a deeper understanding of the amount and nature of dark matter in galaxies. Moreover, remember that the JWST was primarily designed to see farther back in time to the early universe. And so, by making these deep observations into space, scientists can use the JWST to study the role dark matter must have played in the early beginnings of the universe and its evolution. James Webb Telescope, which is currently equipped with enough fuel and infrastructure to last 20 years in space, may just be what we need to solve the mystery of dark matter once and for all. It resides in a permanent location in space and has a wide heat shield to protect its delicate parts, like infrared instruments, from heat and solar radiation. NASA had to ensure everything was right before the launch because they had only one shot. If anything went wrong, reaching the James Webb Telescope to conduct any repairs would be practically impossible. Refueling was also not an option. However, with the amount of propellant on board, scientists are convinced the JWST should last the proposed two decades. Although dark matter stars are bringing a new perspective to the mysterious concept of dark matter, there are also other ways scientists are using James Webb Telescope to explore this mysterious concept. Professor Matthew Walker of Carnegie Mellon University is the principal investigator of a program that will use JWST data to work on dark matter using the cold dark matter theory. This theory predicts that dark matter exists in small quantities inside certain clumps called halos. Matthew Walker and his team will apply this theory by looking for perturbations from these subgalactic dark matter halos on various fragile gravitational systems. Just so you know, the science community is working on another massive project, the Nancy Grace Roman Telescope. The project is expected to launch in 2027. This telescope will be capable of supporting a wide field view, and so it would be able to capture images of wide swaths of sky, even wider than the James Webb Telescope. This will make the work of dark matter observation even easier for scientists, as they would be able to straightway study the effects of dark matter on large structures or portions of the universe. If and when we finally get a clear, detailed image of dark stars, modern cosmology will be able to confirm to us, once and for all, that dark matter is definitely out there. 
With the current progress and innovative projects underway in the science community, it's only a matter of time before that dream becomes a reality. Thank you for watching another episode of Voyager. While you are here, click the video on your screen to see more mind-blowing videos like this one.